We're going to go over right now. You look at my chart here, my screen. I'm at ord-oracle.com. Now, Tim Ord comes on every Tuesday and Thursday. He is a fantastic contributor here at TFNN. If uh, you want to get more familiar with his analysis, you can go right over to the services tab of TFNN.com. Get to the secret signs of market tops by Tim Ord and then six secret ratios every trader should know. I know we've had a few of you uh, that have purchased this so far uh, since we had him on last time. Really strongly recommend checking this out. We are joined uh, right now by Tim Ord. How you doing? Tim, doing well. How are you doing? So I'm doing great. So, uh, so we start looking at charts here. I, I think I think we should. I think we should see what's All going right. on. Let's do that. All right. So uh, first chart. Uh, Let's we'll start with chart one. Perfect. And um, kind of showed this chart actually last uh, October low. I was a little bit off on the exact day of the low. Um, I don't know, a couple of days earlier, but you know, uh, the bottom window. Is a five-day uh, average of the advanced decline, or advanced decline, just a five-day average, and it works pretty well in a bull market. And a bear market works a little bit different, but in a bull market, it picks out the, the short-term lows pretty well. And the bottom window is again the five-day average of the up-down volume uh, for the NYSE. Next window higher is the uh, SPY, and I put uh, dotted red lines there when that ratio got below 0.7. Actually, before I had a point around 0.65, but actually 0.7 or anything lower works just as well. And on Friday of last week, so that was uh, two days ago, trading days ago, uh, the ratio closed at um, 0.68, I think it was. So anyhow, uh, that pretty much marked the low. That's kind of a selling climax low, but uh, also marked the low in the advanced decline. A lot of times, the market can stagger a little bit on a short-term basis. It always comes out at least short-term lows, but sometimes the market will uh, make a little bit a lower low, but basically 90%, if not 100% of the decline is done. There can be retests, but in general, we're setting that a low here. Uh, is the market ready to take off to the upside? Well, we'll, we'll take a look at a couple of different charts. Sure. But this chart here says we're pretty much at the lows. So let's okay. click to chart two. And uh, last Friday, uh, this is a, just the SPY chart going back to uh, looks like early October. And we had a selling climax on Friday. If you look at the volume chart, see the big spike in volume we had there? Uh, that volume chart, uh, if a if market goes down slow and volume gradually increases, that means the market will keep going down. But a lot of times, if the market takes a brunt uh, decline and volume jumps uh, uh, bigly, I guess you might say, <laughs> I always look for a jump in volume 30% compared to the previous uh, days. If it jumps more than 30%. Yeah. A lot of times that, that ends up in exhaustion low. And if you look on Friday's volume, it jumped about 100% compared to the days before it. And that means everybody's trying to get out the door at the same time. Right. And that usually is exhaustion to the downside. So you have a selling climax. Uh, normally the next day is an up day. Then a lot of times, doesn't have to, but a lot of times you get a, a test of the selling climax low. If you look up on the uh, chart, uh, on the top window there, I have 583.36. That was the low, interday low, of the selling climax on last Friday. And so far, the low over the last couple of days, the lowest low has been 584.03, and that was today. And you can't bet on retests all the time, but there's a good chance I think Friday's low is still going to be touched at some point before the majority of the rally starts. The rally is starting here. We're at the support area, which basically is the previous highs. And I, I said before, we had an the downside target 585. So we're smacking that range. And now to, to really say the bottom's in, we'll need a sign of strength right. to the upside. We're not probably going to have that today. So I, I think the market, maybe one more time, may attempt to try to test last Friday's low and kind of build a base here before the rally actually gets started. 
Either way, we're setting at a low where we are at uh, already seen the low, which is last Friday, or it's a test of the low. Either way, uh, according to chart one, we're at a, at, a, at a low. So we'll have to kind of be a little bit of patience here. A lot of times you go into these holiday periods, uh, the market, even though holiday periods lean bullish, uh, a lot of times there's kind of back and forth here. And I think that's what we're going to have. So not a... Uh, anyhow, I'm bullish. I actually am along the market from a couple of weeks ago. I don't see any really big danger here happen, especially with last Friday's uh, climatic low. So let's flip to chart three. Yeah. Um, here's kind of a different, uh, I usually try at least my signals when I uh, get, I don't rely on one indicator. I prefer to have like two or three indicators trigger buy signals uh, before I really jump jump onto the trade and here's another indicator that works pretty well uh it's just basically it's pretty simple uh anyhow all that shaded pink areas are times uh, well yep, I hear the yeah music. tim stay right there because i will probably go over it again when we get back but folks stay right there we'll be right back with tim ord of the ord oracle right after this break welcome back everyone this is jacob shoop you're watching the tom o'brien show right here on tfnn uh, we we're joined by Tim Ord right now, the Ord Oracle. Tim, before we went to the break, we were looking at chart three that has the uh, spy VIX at the bottom. You're just beginning to describe or explain what those pink or red shaded boxes are. Right. Okay. So uh, anyhow, the shaded pink area, I have 10 days, seven days, seven days, eight days, seven days. Yep. And the current kind of setup is five days. But anyhow, for how many days up in a row, the, the statistics are a little bit different. But in general, when you get at least five days up in a row, the market's higher within five days, 70%, over 70% of the time. And the more days you get up in a row, that actually increases. But over the last, uh, or over a week and a half ago, we had five days up in a row. Particularly the market would be higher within five days. Well, it's actually been over five days. What I've noticed here, uh, it's, uh, Indicators kind of change over time. They don't change abruptly, but they change slowly. And this rule, I kind of have stood on it, I guess you might say, over the last several years. But now I notice it's starting to change a little bit. And so this, uh, after five days up, the market will be higher within five days. It's not really true anymore. Mark will be higher. But a lot now it's starting to take five, more than five days. And the red squares I have on this chart show that, you know, back in May, we had 10 days up in a row. And the market went, uh, basically pulled back for, uh, looks like about two, two and a half weeks. And basically in June, the market was up seven days in a row and the market flipped sideways there. You know, it looks like about two weeks also. Uh, so uh, the market on the current time frame, you know, we've seen that high over a week ago the market has pulled back but it may take two weeks or thereabouts for the market to hit new highs here so mm -hmm. but if you get that much momentum up five days in a row uh that usually never comes at the final highs right it's always a higher high after it so we still have a higher high coming here it's just a matter of days before that happens uh so could the rally be starting uh, yesterday, it could be. Uh, I kind of not for sure that'll happen. I think this week's going to kind of be a dead week, but ultimately we're up. We will break higher. So we got two, a two, uh, couple of different indicators saying so. You know, back on page one, uh, we have the five-day uh, advanced decline hitting below uh, seventy suggests we're at the lows. That works pretty well, and. Uh, uh, page two here, uh, we have the selling climax, and uh, on on three we got five days up in a row. So we have a lot of bullish situations going on here. So it's not really time to be bearish. We're also setting at the previous highs, and if you notice those previous highs, there's a big gap there, uh, and what I'm calling is a breakaway gap. And a lot of times breakaway gaps. Uh, don't get filled. Exhaustion gaps due to the upside, but not breakaway gaps. So we'll have to wait and see. Can it get filled? Maybe. Uh, I, I don't think it will. I think we'll find support in this region around the 585 and more likely start a rally. Uh, we may build a trading range for the next couple, three days, but in general, we're going to probably work higher, uh, in my opinion, to year end. So picture remains bullish, kind of a, a consolidation here, but I don't see a top of any consequence. I see support 
pretty close where we are right now. So okay. that's my take on the S&Ps, and I'm going to stick to it. Fantastic. So. Well, then I know I think we're moving into the gold then. Uh, gold's been covering a little bit today, at least, off from its big you know, drop down. So I'm kind of interested to see what you're looking at right now. Uh, we have chart right. four up here. Yeah, chart four. Uh, this inflation deflation ratio, uh, RSI gets below 30, around 30, actually. We had a bottom uh, recently around 31, but uh, Friday, uh, same thing, 29.69 on the RSI of the inflation deflation ratio, which is that chart right below the RSI. RSI is at the top window. So, and also it's a triple bottom. I have a shaded green area there. If you notice, all those lows came pretty much right around 0.14. So we have an RSI and, and a triple bottom. That's how I'm looking at it. So I think gold pretty much has hit a bottom and most likely is about to turn up. It, it actually, I think it's already turned up. Flipped to, uh, flipped to chart two here or chart, yeah, chart five. five. Yeah. Uh, this is uh, top one is GDX. Next window down is the uh, GDX up down volume, cumulative up down volume. Next one lower is the cumulative advanced decline for GDX. And the bottom window is the GDX GLD ratio. And I put Bollinger Bands on it. And it's, uh, it's de it has a decent job picking highs and lows. Uh, if you, the blue lines are times when all three of the four indicators, or, you know, or all, maybe all four of them, hit the upper Bollinger Band. That's kind of a stretch too far to the upside especially you got four different indexes doing it all at the same time and the red lines are times uh when the uh all four indicators reach the lower bollinger band and i know uh this last high I, I marked it in red it should be blue but currently we're in that shaded uh green area light green area and i wanted to point out we hit that lower Bollinger Band on all four of those indicators, the GDX, up-down volume, and uh, up uh, advanced decline, and uh, GDX-GLD ratio. Uh, I think it was on Friday also. So these both markets, the equity market and gold market, seem to be trading together. And since then, we've turned up. So I, I think that probably the low is in. That's like we said, I think, last Thursday. I think we're setting at the lows. You know, Friday was probably the low. And now we're, we're starting a rally again. And how high the rally goes, it's hard to say. I'm thinking we may start a trading range here. Where the previous high is up around 44 is going to be resistance. And uh, the support is around this range we just bought them in. I'm thinking we may flip okay. sideways. Because we kind of had an impulse wave from the March low up to uh, the October high. Right. And I think we're kind of due for a, a, a sideways pattern. The final highs haven't been seen yet. I still think that's still coming. But uh, still, uh, short term, I, I think we're going to go back to the previous highs. Uh, we got time to get one more in? Yeah, absolutely. All right, with sharp six. Uh, this just looks at the bigger trend. You got to you got to trade with the bigger trend. Uh, this is the monthly. The weeklies are also on a bicycle. This is the monthly. It looks at the bigger picture. Chart goes back to 2010. Gave a sell signal in in uh, late 2011, 2012. The sell and bicycles occur when the uh, cumulative monthly up-down volume, cumulative advanced decline are below their Bollinger Bands, mid-Bollinger Band. That's the sell signal because market trends, the volume trends, the volume trends. So this is a kind of a, a good indicator to catch the bigger trends. And right now we flipped bullish back, I think it was May of this year, where both the uh, cumulative monthly up-down volume and cumulative advance decline both jumped above their mid-Bollinger band triggering a buy signal. And again, these signals in the past have last a minimum of a year and a half. So you get May at six months. That's November. So we're in November. So we got at least a year to go. Right. And maybe longer. I don't know. But as long as both those uh, up-down volume advanced client indicators stay above their mid-Bollinger band, the uptrends on a longer-term basis and force. Fantastic. Well, Tim, thank you so much for coming on. We're going to see you Thursday, all right? All right. Sounds good. Fantastic. Folks, Sarah there will be right back for a short segment after this break. <laughs> 